Well, hello, congregation, family and friends and Bereans. I pray that all was well with you. Thank you for joining me for the Thursday broadcast. I pray that you are well. If you're watching me on YouTube, give me a thumbs up if the message is blessing you. If you've been here, uh, make sure that you've subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you're inviting other people. Make sure that your notifications are on because we hope to be even expanding our broadcasting even more so, Lord willing. If you're watching me over here on Facebook Live right now, make sure that you're following the ministry and that you're sharing out the information about our ministry. We have one goal here, and that is to reach as many people for the Lord Jesus as we can with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our purpose. That is the reason we're here. That is the reason that we exist, because God brought us into being, and we look to him for all things. So here we are on Thursday night, and I'm going to look at two passages tonight. I've titled this message, Whether Two or 200. And I hope shortly you'll understand what the title of that means, because I want to share something from Scripture, and then I want to apply it to things that are happening here in this ministry, and maybe even things that are happening in your life. So, Bereans, if you have your Bibles, we're going to start in Luke chapter 21. We're actually going to be looking at a passage from Luke, and then a passage also from Mark, that basically say the same thing. It's just when we put two of them together, we can get more details. Of course, we're talking about the widow who gave her last coins into the treasury. So if you're with me here in Luke 21, starting in verse 1, it says this, And he, this is Jesus, and he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. For they, all out of their surplus, put in their offerings, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. Now, keep your finger there and come over with me to Mark chapter 12. Mark 12, and we're going to read a slight variation of the same story, but this is the same incident that's happening in Mark chapter 12, beginning in verse 41. And he, Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and began observing how people were putting money into the treasury, and many rich people were putting in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amounted to a cent, a penny, Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors to the treasury, for they all put in out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty. She put in all that she owned, all that she had to live on. Why is Jesus saying these things, and why are we reading this in more than one gospel? So let's go back and look at this. First of all, I want to give you a picture. Here's the way it looked back then when they were putting money in the treasury. When they went into the court, there were a series of 12 to 15 baskets. And on the top of the basket was this pipe or this, this horn that would come out at the end like a trumpet. It would come out at the end. And what they would do is, when you wanted to put in your coins, you would just go along these series of baskets and you would drop in your coins where you wanted them to go. Now, it could be that one basket was to supply wood for the altar. Another basket could be to uh, buy animals for the sacrifice and so on. So each basket had their own specific purpose. And so as you're going along, you may want to give a little bit to the animal, a little bit to this, a little bit to that. Okay, so that's the situation. Now, Jesus is in the treasury. He's standing opposite all of these baskets with the horns on them. And he's observing. He's watching. So let's go to Mark chapter 12 in verse 41. It says, and he sat down opposite the treasury. Jesus has a front row seat. He can look directly across and he can watch what people are doing. But of course, as eternal God, he already knows not only what they're going to do, he already knows what they're thinking. And this is part of the lesson that he's trying to teach us. Because even though he's talking to his disciples here, he's talking to you and me right now, tonight, from the Word. It says, as he sat down opposite the treasury, he began observing 
how the people were putting money into the treasury. And I explained to you just a moment ago how that was done. And many rich people were putting in large sums. Now, is that a bad thing? No, it's a good thing. If you're rich, you have more to put in. That's not the main point of what Jesus is trying to tell us. This is an observation that he's making. He's making the observation that these rich people who have the money to do it are dropping in large sums. But as we're going to find out, it's not coming because of the generosity of their heart or coming out of poverty or coming out of their want. It's coming out of their surplus. So in the end, was it given with a cheerful heart? Was it given sacrificially? Was it given to where Jesus was impressed? Well, we read the story already, so we already know that he is not impressed with it. So as these rich people are putting in all of this money in these various baskets, Jesus' eye now goes to this poor widow, who in amongst all of these rich people doesn't have a lot to give. And we pick up the narrative here in verse 42 of Mark 12. It says, A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amounted to a cent. Now, Luke doesn't tell us it amounted to a cent, but Mark does. A cent, a penny. When I was growing up, you could actually still buy a few things for a penny. You could buy penny candy. You could go to the local store on the corner and actually buy things for a penny. What can you do with a penny now? Nothing that I know of. You need a whole lot of pennies to even buy one piece of candy these days. But God can use that penny. God can use those two copper coins. And this is what I'm, this is the message I want to leave with you tonight. God can use it whether it's two coins or 200 coins. Whether it's $2 or $200, God multiplies. The Bible says that he multiplies some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. God creates that. I'm a living testimony that I've seen that happen again and again. I can't explain it, but it happens. I'm not talking about anything magical, anything that's out of this world. But I want you to see that Jesus, his concentration and his focus now goes to this poor widow. The Bible identifies her as a poor widow. So we already know that she doesn't have a lot. But she takes her last two coins, the last two coins, and she drops them into one of these baskets. And Jesus noticed in that. And in the next verse here, in verse 43, he calls his disciples to him. Now, he's calling the disciples, Peter and John and James and whoever was there with him, but he's calling you and he's calling me and he wants us to pay attention to this and he says truly or the king james usually says verily but truly i say to you that this poor widow put in more than all of the contributors to the treasury what does luke 21 tell us i think he says it a little bit differently let's go over here and take a look real quick he says here, truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all of them. Over here, he just says he put in more than all the contributors to the treasury. Now, uh, if you're any kind of a math person, if you enjoy adding and subtracting and all that, you would look at this and say, well, that can't possibly be true because Jesus is failing uh, adding 101. How can two coins be worth more than all of this money that all of these rich people are putting in. How is that possible? Any, any mathematician would tell you that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense if we look at it strictly from a physical point of view. Of course two copper coins that equal a penny are not going to be more than all the other contributors. Of course, that is also not Jesus' point. His point is coming up. He has observed it's how this woman was giving. It's how she's giving, not how much she's giving. So after he tells his disciples here in verse 43, he says, Truly I say to you, this poor widow. Now, you can imagine the disciples are probably looking at this widow. Perhaps Jesus pointed her out. 
Perhaps he said, that woman over there, we don't have all the dialogue. We can only go by what is said. He says, truly I say unto you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors. We have no idea how much money it was, but we do know from Luke 21 that they were dropping in large sums of money. Now, Jesus is going to make a distinction. This is the key to the whole situation, this whole scene. He says in verse 44, For they, these are the rich people, these are the ones dropping lots of money in, for they all put in out of their surplus, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she owned, all that she had to live on. Now, how would Jesus know that? Well, he's eternal God. Of course he knows that. He knows exactly what this woman put in because he knows everything about her life because he's eternal God himself. Now, what is the distinction? What is he drawing here? What is he trying to tell us? The difference between surplus and poverty. Surplus and poverty. See, if you have a million dollars, let's just say, you have a million dollars and you make a donation to some charity of ten thousand dollars are you going to miss that ten thousand no you you made it right back in interest you get a tax write-off but are you really going to miss ten thousand dollars if you have a million no this is what Jesus is comparing if you're giving out of your surplus you're not even giving out of your basic needs. You're not even giving right down to any kind of sacrificial way. What you're doing is you're giving the extra cream. You're giving a little that's something that you're not going to miss. So while they're making a big show of it and they're coming along and dropping all of these huge sums of money in these baskets to make themselves look good, Jesus knows their heart because they're not giving sacrificially. They're giving out of their surplus. They're giving that 10,000 when they have a million. I'm not going to miss the 10,000. On the other hand, we have this woman who has two coins to her name. And because giving was so important to her, because she wanted to do her part in the treasury and her part in the temple, the two coins that were hers are now in the treasury and she walks away with nothing. She gave 100% of her income, 100%. Jesus says she gave all that she had. She gave out of her poverty. Here was a woman that no doubt needed food, maybe new clothes. Maybe she lived in shoddy housing. We don't know. What we do know is that she was living in poverty versus all of the rich people. I often wondered, did any of those rich people look around while they were dumping all these huge sums of money in? I often wondered, did any one of those rich people bother looking at this widow and wanting to help her? We're not told that, so we can't speculate. But it is something to kind of think about. And isn't that like that sometimes these days? People that have lots of money. And I'm not making any accusations. I'm just saying people with lots of money tend to hang on to their money. Or they give a little token donation. How many give out of their sacrifice. How many would give their last dollars for something that they believed in? We have all kinds of things in this world like tax shelters and all kinds of tax breaks and loopholes and things like that where the rich people just keep getting richer. A lot of poor people around. Jesus is trying to show us something here. It's not how much we give. It's how we give, not how much, but how we give. Are we giving it cheerfully? Are we giving it sacrificially? Are we giving it knowing that God can multiply that? Let me just share this with you. Uh, we have, and I don't mention any names, we have some wonderful people that pray for this ministry. You know who you are. You know if you're praying for this ministry. And you also know uh, if you have helped us financially, we do have, we have, we don't get a lot of support, but we do have some. We, we just had a couple offerings come in, one today and one yesterday. We're grateful. I've been in touch with you and the receipts are on their way. But I just want to share this with you. It's not to embarrass anyone. This is actually to illustrate this story. We have a couple people uh, that when they contribute to the ministry, they give $2. 
I think it's a beautiful thing. It almost brings tears to my eyes. Two dollars. And I can tell by their hearts. I can tell that they are giving out of their sacrifice. Because when you think about it, how many people would just give two dollars? Now, here's what I'm saying. We are very grateful for the two dollars. And I have seen God multiply that over and over and over again. You see, you get $2 here and you get $5 there. And maybe a bigger donation comes in for $100 or $50. We don't get too many big donations. But we get a lot, some small ones, a lot of small ones. And we are grateful for every single one. And as I was looking at this passage, I'm saying, Lord, this is exactly what you're doing. Because I know that the people who are supporting this ministry, you who are supporting this ministry with your prayers and with reaching out to make sure that we're doing okay. One of my dear friends, you reached out yesterday and you said, I'm just checking in with you to make sure you're okay. Because she knows what this ministry and what I have been through the last few months what this household has been through, what this ministry has been through the last few months, and just reached out to say, I want, just want to make sure you're okay. Just want to make sure you're doing okay. If, if you are ever in a situation where you feel intimidated, or you feel like your $1, or your $2, or your $5 doesn't count, because you don't have big money, you're wrong. Jesus is showing us that what this woman did was worth more than all the rest of the money that came in. All of those piles of money. Do you think when they emptied those baskets and they were counting out and divvying out all this money, that two little copper coins in the bottom of one of these baskets meant anything to anyone? They might have looked at that and said, ha, two little coins, what are we going to do with them? God can multiply them. Now, I've told you lately, recently, that, you know, since COVID hit, we've been able to help a number of people uh, with COVID. I, I trust you're helping, we're helping, we're all doing what we can. But we were able to send out several shipments of masks that we had purchased for people that couldn't afford it. Uh, we were able to buy food. Uh, we paid a utility or two. Uh, we bought uh, material for a, a young man that was leaving for college. I mentioned that a few weeks ago. We were able to do all those things. And you know how that happened? It happened because of $2 here and $2 there and $5 here and $10 there. So why am I saying this to you? Am I trying to hustle you for money? No, that's between you and God. If you want to support this ministry, it's between you and God. I'm not here to tell you what you need to do or what you should do. But when I was looking for this passage and looking through it today and reading it, I thought, Lord, here you are teaching all of us a valuable principle that it doesn't matter how small the amount is. It matters how you give it. And that's the lesson. That's the lesson. Because of your generosity and because of the two dollars here and the five dollars there it all adds up and we were able to help people maybe you're watching this not necessarily live right now or you're watching this later point and we helped you and we were able to send something to you we were able to you know chip in for food or something like that that all came from all of those widows those poor widows those people that gave with a cheerful heart were to be cheerful givers the bible tells us what good is it and who is it going to bless if you just toss off an amount of money but you're never going to miss it how does it impact your life it doesn't if you're living on easy street and you're comfortable and you give a token little thing I don't know how many of you, here I'll give you another example that just occurred to me, because Crystal and I will do this occasionally. How many times have you been driving down the street and you see someone on a street corner with a sign, you know, out of work or hungry, homeless, have children to feed, whatever, whatever their placard would say, and you're stopped at a light. Now you may look in your purse or you may look in your wallet and say, Chad, I don't have enough. Do you know that if they're not scamming, if they're honest, if they're true, they're grateful for whatever you can give them. 
You give them $10, great. They should also be grateful if you give them $2. There's been times that we've been on a corner and just didn't have any cash because we're certainly far from rich. <laughs> we're, we're not rich at all. We've, we've dug out change. And we've given change to the people. And you should see some of their reactions. Wow. Some of their reactions are, thank you so much. God bless you. Doesn't matter. Even if it was 50 cents. Other people, oh, what, what, 50 cents, what, that's it, 50 cents? I'll tell you, I'll tell you another story, and, and I'm giving you these illustrations to encourage you. Because if you think, look, I'm not in a great position, Lord, I can't help you, I can't tithe, I can't pay first fruits, you know, I, I what can I do with one or two dollars? What can I do if I give a ministry ten dollars? Other people are giving them hundreds or thousands. Your $10 mean more than the $1,000 because chances are your 10 came from uh, poverty, came sacrificially, and it came cheerfully. Otherwise, why would you do it? You're just throwing big sums of money and say, hey, I can throw a lot of money in a ministry and then I can write it off at the end of the year. Cheerful givers don't think that way. I certainly don't think that way. I'll give you one more example. Uh, we were driving probably a year ago. It was spring, summertime. This woman was standing on the corner, uh, you know, with a sign and she had a backpack and so on. And, and we did not have any cash with us. But her sign said, uh, single mom, uh, two small children, need money for clothing, diapers, so on, so on. Okay, we see, we see this and we roll down our window. So we don't have any money, but... Here is our business card. Here is our ministry card. Please get in touch with us and we will meet you at your favorite store and we will buy you some clothes for your children. We'll buy you some supplies for your children from the ministry. We'll be glad to do that. We just don't have any cash right now. You know, the woman said, thank you. Not, not a bright thank you. Just thank you. We never heard from her. Never. A couple of weeks later, we're coming down the same road. We see the same woman on a corner. And I've seen her a few times since then. Same card, same thing on it. And I'm not, I'm not making a judgment. I mean, I, 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 I guess she does have children that need help. But isn't it interesting that because we didn't have cash, we didn't have ready money, we gave her a card that said, contact us and we'll meet you at a store and you can buy things for your family. Don't you think that that would be a benefit to someone? We were doing it cheerfully. We were doing it because that's what Jesus would do. Jesus would supply somebody's need if he could do that. Jesus would do that. We were just following what our Lord and Savior would do, reaching out, trying to help someone. Now, uh, she never contacted us, and that's that. I mean, I make no judgment on it. I pray that she's okay. I don't know where she is now. I pray that her children got what they needed. I pray that she was on the level. But isn't it interesting how even perception can be, why are you only giving me a dollar? Uh, don't you have 10? Don't you have 20? Jesus is showing us that whether it's 2 or 200, or 2,000, if it's given correctly, if it's given in the Spirit of God, if it's given in the Spirit of Christ, if it's given generously, if it's given freely, it doesn't matter how much it is. Doesn't matter at all how much it is. It's how you give it. It's why you give it. It's the reason that's in here. Are you giving it to really help someone? Are you really doing that? Or is it for ego? Why are you doing it? And that's what Jesus is showing us. And you know what? Here it is 2,000 years after this incident happened. And we're still talking about this poor widow. She's nameless. And there's a reason why, I think. Why would... It could be any of us. It could be a poor widower. It could be the person that's on Social Security and says, Oh, I used to give at my church all the time. And now I'm on a fixed income. And I just can't give what I used to. Maybe you can't, but maybe you can give a smaller amount. See the point? Too many, I think, are belittled. 
And if I'm speaking to you, I want you to know that even if you had a dollar to help someone else out, do you realize that God can multiply that dollar? God can multiply that dollar and the two dollars and the five dollars and it all adds up instead of well I don't have I don't have a hundred dollars I don't have a hundred dollars so I can't give anything that's not what Jesus is talking about give what you can do as you are able that's the message here give sacrificially yes give out of your poverty yes because it comes from more of a a, a pure heart not that any of our hearts are pure, but more of a pure heart than someone who just tosses off a few dollars and never going to miss it. If you feel, hey, if I give that two dollars, I may be short a little bit. God will bless you for that. God will bless you. Um, so anyway, that's what I wanted to really say tonight. Uh, if this helps you, at all, and I hope it helps somebody. It's been bothering me um, because we do have some folks that give to our ministry and we love you we, we love all of you every single one of you that give to the ministry and I don't care if it's a dollar or a hundred dollars a thousand dollars it doesn't matter it's coming from your heart and it's coming because you have chosen this ministry to help support if you know someone that is struggling with this issue with thinking that you know they don't have enough so they can't help the church or they can't help their pastor or they can't reach out and help a food bank or give to a local Salvation Army or something like that because they don't have enough please know that that the lesson that Jesus is showing us is he can take two and multiply it into 200 he can take two coins and he can say that woman gave more from those two coins than all of these people, all of this money that came in here. Jesus can multiply it. God can multiply it. He can use it for good. So if you find yourself in a position where you feel a little down or you feel inadequate because you can only give a couple of dollars, please don't. Please don't. Anything you give towards God's work God can multiply. It can go for God's purpose if it's used correctly. If this message has helped you, please share it out. Isaiah 55, 11 tells us God's word does not return void. It reaches all those people he intends it to reach. If it reached you tonight, if this ministered to you tonight, if this helped you tonight, then I'm very grateful and I'm humble. Uh, please share it out as God would lead you. Also, uh, Bereans, I, I didn't give you a whole lot to look at, but I, I would encourage you to go back and read those passages again. Read through exactly what Jesus is talking about. But the most important thing tonight is I just wanted to reach out to you because I believe in being honest. I believe in being transparent. I believe in letting you know what is happening here, not only in my life, but in the ministry life, in this household, and what's happening. And I try to be transparent, and I try to give you some insight as to what's happening here, so that if you choose to support this ministry, you have an idea of what's going on. You know that I am uh, available seven days a week. You know that I'm on social media all the time. I pray with many of you. I counsel with some of you. Uh, I'm on several times a week. I'm not boasting. This is just what God has called me to do. And I hope that we have developed a level of trust, I hope, at, at this point, that you're being fed. Because if you're not, you would turn the channel. You would click off. You would go somewhere else. You wouldn't share the videos. You wouldn't send well wishes. You wouldn't send offerings and love offerings in. So please continue to pray for this ministry. Pray that I stay strong and healthy. God has kept me and Crystal from COVID. We know many people uh, who not only are sick, but we know quite a few people who have died from it already. It's a terrible thing that's happening out there. And we pray that God will, will, will put his hand on the situation and, and get rid of this horrible thing. He will make a way for a vaccine soon. God could stop it like that if he wanted to. So pray that I stay strong and healthy, that I continue uh, preaching and teaching as he called me to do. No sugar coating, no retreat, no quit, no backing up. This 
is a ministry where you will never hear a sugar-coated gospel. You're not going to hear a feel-good, motivational message that makes you walk away with no conviction, no deliverance, no account for sin, nothing. That's not going to happen here because that's not the gospel. The gospel has wonderful aspects to it, but it also is a convicting gospel. And so I want to thank you for being with me tonight. Please pray that if God would uh, lead you to support us financially, there's four ways you can do it. One is PayPal. One is Cash App. One is Facebook Messenger, also known as Facebook Pay now. And one is Snail Mail. If God would lead you to support us, that's between you and God. You don't have to. It's a conviction between you and God. Uh, but at the very minimum, would you continue praying for us, praying for this ministry that we go forward that we are God honoring, that we're doing exactly what God has called us to do. Thank you for sharing part of your Thursday evening with me. Join me again on Sunday at 2 p.m. live central time for the Sunday sermon. Thanks for being here. God bless you.